Well, that took quite a bit of time on the on the main screen, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to move a couple of things over here, guys, to make sure that we have the best possible audio settings and video settings as well. Like, what the hell's going on with my camera? I'm like, it's cute or something. Let me see if I can fix that. Ah, that's good enough. So, how are you guys doing? Hopefully, everyone's doing great. I know, I know. I've been gone for a couple of uh, days now. I think the last video I uploaded was like last Tuesday or something, so like a week ago. And I'm really, really sorry. I, I, I would like to apologize because I did. Um, we did get a lot of like a rush orders uh, last week here in the studio, and I wasn't able to keep up with all of the productions. I'm actually recording things that I should should have had like last week for some of my classes because I we were just like flooded with work. And uh, I actually want to use the, this little bit of like the beginning of the video to show you a couple of the things that we've been working on because uh, I just say that we're working on things and we're working on things. Unfortunately, I can't show everything uh, because you guys know that there's usually like NDAs and stuff. Um, but if you guys remember, last year I actually worked on a very, very cool project. I've mentioned that this was one of my lifelong uh, dreams to, to work on. And... Um, um, yeah, I, I worked for, uh, here we go, let me let me see if I can get the audio to work, there we go. So, um, I was contacted last year by a company called Impossible Objects, and um, I, I collaborated with helping them create uh, this very cool commercial. I did uh, some texturing work, and this is for the game Diablo Immortal. Now, I know, I know that uh, Blizzard and Diablo do not have the best reputation right now, but the, several years ago, especially when I started my 3D career, Blizzard was like the best company. So being able to work on, on something uh, regarding their products was always one of my goals. And uh, yeah, so I'll show it to you guys. And then I'll tell you what I did for this one. So yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. It's a 45 second um, commercial and uh, I helped the studio with uh, some texturing work for the characters. So I was um, responsible of uh, like quality checking some of like the, the textures for the demons and the main Diablo character. And I redid uh, several of the textures for the Barbarian because we had to adapt the low poly models to this like super like high quality models for the commercial. So yeah, it was a, it's a really, really cool project. And um, I was really, really happy with the result. It's one of those projects that it, it, I had to wait quite a little bit of time to to make sure I could show it to you guys because um, of course of NDAs and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, that's one of the things that I worked on last year. But this year we've been working on some um, what's the word on some like VR stuff. That's that's the main uh, like thing. So I can show you. What this is a little bit of the demo uh, that we uh, did. So there's this uh, team here in, in Mexico called uh, Santos. And uh, we did this uh, VR like visualization, and this was like a one week project. It was it was quite the the challenge for everyone, and um, yeah, we we built everything from scratch. I actually went uh, last week to to where the team is located. It's a it's a long trip from where we're, where I am at, um, and I met the president of the club and everything. It was a, quite a quite a very cool experience. So that's the reason that's the reason, my friends, why I haven't been able to be as consistent with all of the deliveries that um, that we normally share. But don't worry, I'm gonna try to pick it up and uh, and keep on working on stuff. I know we missed our uh, live stream that I promised we were gonna have last week, but unfortunately, again, due to time constraints, I wasn't able to do that. So today we're gonna be working on this thing right here. We're gonna continue with the with the sci-fi helmet. We're gonna move on onto the cleaning process. But before that, let me remind you guys that if you wanna check any of my courses or any of the courses from any of the other instructors here at Nextoot, you can check them out by using a Skillshare promo, which you're going to find right here. Hey guys, Abraham here. 
I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So, um, continuing with this guy, well, before we move on to this guy, I just want to remind you guys that, yes, we are not abandoning the lighthouse. I actually thought about a very cool technique that I want to show you. Uh, it's probably going to be the next video cool technique that we can do for the shingles, like the shingles on the roof. And I'm going to try to, like, we're going to have to kind of, like, reboot some of the things that we did because now that we jumped into Unreal Engine 5, things are going to be a little bit different. Uh, but, yeah, so... As you can see right here, we have a lot of very cool shapes, and some of them are really, really clean, like this one right here, right? And one of the cool things, or one of the newest tools that we have uh, here inside of Seabrush is something called the Bevel Pro. And Bevel Pro is a really, really handy tool that we're going to be able to use for this specific piece, for instance, to give it a little bit of more of an interesting look, because one of the things that I always mention whenever we're modeling, especially when we're box modeling instead of Maya, is that you're never really going to have, like, perfectly, like, 90 degrees or, like, perfectly sharp corners. Things always have a little bit of a bevel and in one of the like most recent like a uh, seabrush uh, like a uh uh, iterations they include this new thing called bevel pro which you're gonna find if i'm not mistaken in the subtool palette there we go so the way bevel pro works is it actually uses light booleans to create an interesting thing uh, it uses a, another like 3d like stuff called Vulkan. Uh, so if you have like a very old system you might not be able to use um bevel pro because you do need the Vulkan like capabilities in your in your graphics card and um it will use your polygroups so it's very important that you have polygroups if i were to grab this thing and, and remove the polygroups, then um, the, the bevel wouldn't work. So it, it works really well in tandem with the things that we did previously with this thing, which was the like the cut tools, right? So here, the only thing I need to do is I literally just need to click Bevel Pro. It's going to open this little like software or package that you can see right here. And this is the preview that we're seeing. Like this is what, what's going to happen to the to the Bevel Pro. So the way this works is, first of all, I need to select what's the amount of Bevel that I want to create, like how, how sharp or not I want this thing to be. I can change the mesh resolution. And by doing this, it will also change the way this uh, looks. We can try doing a little bit of fixed edge right there. But usually, uh, like that red shape that we see right there, that's the... Um, What's the word? That's the actual like booleans or, or meshes that it's going to use to create the booleans. Let me see if I can. Let me reset this because I think something was not working properly there. Let's try it again. There we go. That's a little bit better. So that looks okay here. I'm going to say preview edges. And when I hit preview edges, you can see that's the that's the shapes or those are the shapes that we're going to get once we do the bevel. And as you can see right now, it works or it looks quite, quite nice. If this is a little bit too much, we can, of course, reduce the amount of bevels, uh, like uh, go with very, very small bevels or not. When, when you see this like blue spots right there, that's that's like the, the software telling you, hey, I, I really don't know how to resolve that. So, so if you want to have like a nice little bevel here, definitely need to increase this until we don't really see those like blue points so those are like the the new bevels that we're gonna have that looks quite quite nice we can change the the way that the bevel looks the smoothness of the bevel that looks interesting i, I like it and then at the end the only thing we need to do is we need to um apply this or save this here I'm just gonna hit save or not not save sorry uh where is it oh apply there we go so now, as you can see, we've uh, like properly applied the, the bevels to every single part of our shape. And we can just save this or we can just uh, close this. Did it work? No. Hmm. That's weird. It feels like they changed something here because it just it used to just. Uh, auto crease, auto apply. There we go. Like that should be working. And uh, that should be it. There's a little bit of fixed edges right there. 
But yeah, the, the bevel press should be working. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just the OK button at, at the bottom part. There we go. Uh, so yeah, there we go. As you can see, now this thing is uh, properly beveled. Yes, we might have some like little issues here and there, like this one right here that we would need to fix. But for instance, that one, uh, a very easy way to fix that is since we do have the proper like proportions on, on this like outer side, like this, the right side is looking good and it's the left side that has uh, some issues. Uh, what we can do is we can go to deformation mirror this so that it's the other way around and then if we go mirror and weld we can just like bring whatever's on this side to the other side and that's it so as you can see that piece immediately looks a little bit better because it has this very nice bevel that we would expect to see on like sci-fi things now the big question is okay that that was easy because we had like a very clean shape to work with, with from the beginning but how could we do that or how we would how would we do that with pieces that are not like super clean like this one right here and there's a couple of different ways to do it one way is to actually like bring it into Maya and, and uh, uh, what's the word and, and rebuild it and everything. I personally like doing the following. So what I like to do is I like to mask out the piece that we created, like this piece right here. Usually just like a one side of the things. Like I, I really don't want the thickness right now. I just want like the, the basic shape of the element, like this one right here. I would even like get rid of this piece right here. You'll, you'll see why in just a second. So now that we have this, I am going to go into Subtool and I'm going to hit Extract with Zero Thickness. What this will do when I hit Accept is it's going to create a nice little like band, which is completely, completely thin. So this band is what we're going to be using to rebuild the surface. First, we're going to go to Geometry and we're going to say C Remesher and we're going to C Remesh once. And we'll C Remesh it. The problem is it's really, really thick. So one thing we can do actually before that is we can go to geometry, to deformation, sorry, and I'm gonna use a polish by groups. And this, as you can see, will kind of like crunch the edges and keep them like a little bit nicer and tighter. That looks a, little, a lot better. Now we're gonna go geometry, see remesher, but we're gonna say half. So we wanna do a half of whatever we have right there. And we're gonna do again and once more. And this is a lot closer, as you can see, to what we would expect to have on a sort of um, like Maya traditional production pipeline, right? Like a normal, in this case, it's a little bit curved, which is fine, but it's just a normal edge loop uh, effect. So now, when we, if we want to bring back the uh, the thickness that we have, because if you remember, this thing is like quite thick going backwards, what I need to do is I need to go into my ba -ba -ba dynamic subdivision. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to add thickness to it. Now, by default, the thickness is going to be going forward, as you can see right here, which in this case, I'm just going to change the offset back. So as you can see, the thickness goes back. We might need to play around with the thickness. Let's get rid of this for just a second. And we can do something like this. There we go. Now, another thing that we can do, as you can see, there's a little bit of crunchiness there on the, on the edges. That's a lot better. And um, I would like this face, like this polygroup right here, I'm gonna press, well, I need to hit apply so that this, this thing like is now applied. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into polygroups and we're gonna say auto groups. So now we have one forward face, one backward face, and then the, the border. Let's, let's do another color so we can see, there we go. So if we grab this face right here and we mask it, we can invert the mask. And when we hit R, or we're going to our gizmo, let's, center the gizmo there we go we can actually scale this up it's pretty much like like if we were scaling the faces inside of maya right so as you can see we get this very 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 cool effect we can flatten this out it's pretty much like like poly modeling but we're modeling with uh with the tools that we have here instead of seabrush as you can see we create this very 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 nice block right there cool so now if we get out of this you can see that we're a lot closer to the thickness that we would expect to have on the on the helmet itself and again we can use our new newly found uh, tool which is the the bevel pro to create some nice crisp edges right there so we're gonna go to bevel pro let's go here as you can see thanks to the fact that we have polygroups we're gonna be able to get a really really nice clean cut all throughout the element i definitely want to make this thing a little bit bigger there we go and i'm just gonna hit uh okay Oh, that did not work. Let's try it again. So let's do bevel. Let's do um, auto apply and then hit OK. There we go. So now, as you can see, we get this very, very nice, interesting 
hard surfacey piece or, or, or element. Uh, do we have a uh, light building? There we go. Oh yeah, okay, so um, it, it brought in the <laughs> the pieces that it used to create the piece, which we don't want right now. As you can see, this is the piece, the actual piece. This is the original one. Let's just delete one. There we go. So now, this guy right here, let's center the pivot point, has or has been clean to create a more organic and, and like interesting looking shape. So we can go to the helmet, and since we don't need all of this like sketch mask that we used before, there's a couple of options as well. I just like to push it in. Just push it in so that we don't have to see it. And that way we have successfully created this piece. Now, one of the cool things about this piece is that it still is like relatively low poly. So if we need to just use our move brush to give it a better shape, as you can see here, we're not gonna break any of the, of the things that we had before. And we can just like make sure it matches or it follows the shape of our helmet in a nice way. And there we go. So now we have two clean pieces. We have this clean piece and this clean piece. And uh, you don't have to do this for all of the pieces. For instance, like this piece right here, that's a very obvious like square, right? Like it's, it's like a cube pretty much. Uh, however, it does like come from there. Yeah, now that I see it, it, it does have like all of the shapes. So let's, let's redo that very quickly again. So I'm gonna just again mask this whole piece up. Bring this all the way down here. Here's where having a very clean mask is really, really helpful. And we're gonna go extract. We extract with zero thickness. Hit uh, accept. First thing we need to do is we need to clean that shape. And I like using this polish by groups. And then we go uh, geometry, zero mesh. We try to do half and we zero mesh and we keep zero meshing. And the cool thing about the zero meshing is that it should give us a cleaner, cleaner look. Now, one of the things that I'm, I'm looking to, uh, about or, or trying to, to find here is some nice topology, as you can see here. So for instance, here, we might even go here and again, polish by features. That's also gonna give us like a very nice crisp look. So now, again, now that we have this very nice uh, features, we can go into uh, dynamic subdivision, turn it on, give it some thickness. If you keep the thickness like low, it will actually do the thickness for both sides. And that looks quite nice. I'm just gonna hit apply. And that's it. We have this nice clean shape. Now, of course, um, here, for instance, one thing I can definitely do is just clean this like square section. Here's where the cut brush uh, or the knife brush is really, really handy as well because we just like cut that up right there. And if we need some like sharper cuts here, like on the sides, we can also do that. Remember the double tap that we had before? There we go. So we can get those like very, very interesting taps. And again, once we have this, we can go into our Bevel Pro and just create the bevel. Now, of course, as you can see here, this bevel is a little bit trickier. So we definitely need to keep this a lot smaller, a lot lower. Something like that looks a little bit better. That's interesting. Let's hit uh, apply and hit okay. And as you can see, we get the very nice clean effect. And as we've done before, we can just grab our move brush and just like start like matching things the way I would expect them to match or the way I want them to match. For instance, I, I kind of like that like interesting circle effect right there. I, I think it looks interesting, but not this one. So this one, let's let's push it back, and let's just start playing with these shapes. So we get this very nice, like layering effect. Definitely need to push these guys out so we get like the border of the glass. And there we go. That's uh, that's the way we're we're cleaning this. Now I'm definitely thinking ahead, uh, right? If this was uh, going to be like for for BFX. Like if, if I eventually w was gonna do this for like, um, what's the word, like subdivision, um, like, like subdivision workflow, I would definitely just like go back into Maya and retopologize everything to make sure everything's subdivised nicely. Since that's, that's not the case, since this is gonna be baked into a, a low poly that we're gonna create, um, in that case, I'm not worrying that much about it. That's why I, I can be a little bit looser, I would say, uh, in the way that this thing works. 
So let's finally, uh, I don't want to make, like, I don't want to drag this video too long. I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to do this once more with the, with the glass panels. And then um, for all of the other pieces, uh, I, I do want to show you a couple of other techniques, like the one that I was mentioning, the, the Maya technique, uh, because I do think it's, it's, it's uh, helpful for everyone to know about other ways in which you can do this sort of uh, stuff. So for this one, uh, same deal, uh, we're going to mask out the shape of our element for like our glass pane. So mask all of that out, there we go. And we're gonna do extract, extract, accept. There we go, oh yeah, that, okay, so this is a problem because uh, I forgot to erase the mask that we previously have. It's not the end of the day because one thing we can do is we can just do a select lasso and then just deselect the glass panes like this and then invert the selection and then very carefully just get rid of this pieces right here the straighter the better in this case there we go and now I'm gonna say uh, delete hidden this is where the uh, deformation polished by features really 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 works because as you can see it definitely cleans up a lot of the stuff right there and we're gonna say, I actually wanna give it like a like a flattening effect. So I'm gonna use my trim dynamic, just flatten everything a little bit. And then we're gonna do a geometry, a series measure. And then instead of doing half, I'm gonna do same. So same should keep the exact same amount, but it should clean a little bit more. And then we are gonna do a half. Let's do another uh, deformation. Polish by features. That's okay. I'm gonna try this. Polish crisp edge. There we go. That one's a little bit better. Let's go another Siri mesh. And you definitely wanna like make sure to use your move brush to to keep the shapes as nice as possible, right? Like we, we don't wanna lose that nice sort of like sharp effect that we had before. Now we go into dynamic south division. We turn it on. We give it a little bit of thickness for our, like glass paints, something like that. And we hit apply. Now what we can do here is we can again, try and use our cut tool or our knife brush, knife curve to bring back some of those like very nice sharp lines that we had before. I'm gonna give it a couple of like interesting cuts on the corners, kind of like a like beveled edge. Gotta be very careful with those cuts right there. We really wanna go all the way through. Otherwise, we, we might get those. I, I'm not like super concerned about those, but yeah, you, you usually wanna have these things going all the way around. So double tap there and there. There we go. That should give us a, a cleaner look right there. Let's turn this off for just a second. And we should be able to go again into Subtool and um, Bevel Pro. Let's go. That's okay. It's a little bit too much, I would say. Let's keep it a little, little bit smaller. Just a very nice, like, small detail. I think I like that one a little bit better. And we just auto apply and hit OK. And there we go. We're going to get this very nice, clean effects right here. And if we take a look, the size is a little bit small, but no problem. You can just like start like modifying these things a little bit so that they match the original shape language and shape design that we had. So for instance, this one, let's really bring them closer. Of course, as we've mentioned before, there's a couple of things we can do here. We definitely want to just like push this thing in a little bit and just let this like glass paint sit there. And that way that's, that's how we're going to know the depth that it should have like everywhere else. Right? So for instance, here probably need to push that depth a little bit further out. A little bit of overlap because I know that we're eventually going to have a little bit of rust and dirt and stuff like that. So in this case, we can 
we can be a little bit more aggressive there. And that's it. That's the uh, that's the initial process of uh, of cleaning up this section right here. So if we take a look at all of the of the pieces that we have, we have this one, we have this one, this one. So as you can see, this is creating our our main like section of the of the helmet, and it's converting or we're converting all of those um, like dirty shapes that we had as a sketch, and they're now becoming something a little bit more interesting. Now, of course, remember all of these pieces right here, like the glass and stuff, they're eventually gonna be textured and we're gonna give it like the honeycomb effect and stuff. We can use a little bit of train dynamic. I think one of the things that I don't love about this one is that it's kind of like, it doesn't have like a flat surface or like an uniform surface. So just smooth things out and just play around it. It's tricky because it's a, it's a curved area, right? Like it's a, it's a curved piece, but there we go. Oh, and we have, uh, this piece as well so yeah that's uh, that's it guys as you can see we we're we're getting there we're um we're moving along this is definitely going to take a little while again as i mentioned in the in the next part of the series i'm going to show you how we can do some of this um like constructions of these shapes but inside of maya this is a technique i used oh, a couple of years ago for a characters that i did and um since the pieces were a little bit more complicated more organic um it was a little bit easier to just like re them and play around with the shapes inside of Maya. Now you can imagine that eventually, like right now, I don't think we're gonna be able to uh, to do it because we don't have the resolution, but eventually we're gonna have all of this like little lines and, and cut lines and segments and stuff. And all of that, uh, those things are gonna look really, really cool with the final, with the final helmet. So yeah, there we go, guys. I'm gonna stop the video right here. It's um, I'm really happy to be back. By the way, I just realized that we uh, we achieved or we got to I believe it was twenty eight thousand subscribers. Let me let me check real quick. Let me check because I was just like, wow, did we really twenty six thousand subscribers? Yeah, we're we're at twenty six thousand subscribers. I started recording videos for you guys. I'm actually gonna give you the exact time where I when I started this uh, at this journey with you guys. I've been doing courses for next to of course for a couple of years now. But I was asked by Nalene to start recording videos for YouTube last year. And the very first like course that we did, like a mini series, it was the um, the modeling and M51 grenade, which at the time of uh, this recording has 11,000 views. That's amazing. And uh, in this video, it was in the old studio and everything. Oh, I look so young and so <laughs> full of energy. Um, there we go. So, yeah, it was June 15. So last month we we had our first year uh, uploading videos. Uh, at first it was almost daily and uh, then we <laughs> slowed down a little bit. But it's been quite a journey, guys. So thank you. Thank you to all of you guys, all of the 26,000 subscribers that we have in the channel. We're working on more premium courses. We're working on, on different instructors. There's more instructors that are coming into the into the team, helping us uh, like create more uh, amazing content for you guys. As you guys know, I don't know everything in the 3D production pipelines. I'm specialized in certain things. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I am going to stop the video right here. Uh, hopefully you like this uh, tips and this uh, cleaning process. And I'll see you back on the next one. I I'm still going to, I'm still deciding whether we do the, the lighthouse uh, shingles technique that I was um, thinking about, or if we do more uh, sci-fi helmet. But until then, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. You guys know the drill. And I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.